Hey guys, me, Ronald Chris Tomer here with this Friday mountain weather update to radar first out of the Northeast. So here comes the next Alberta Clipper. You can already see some of the snow showing up around Sault Ste. Marie, Marquette, coming in out of the, uh, the Northern Great Lakes. That is gonna cruise down through the Northeast with some light snow accumulations and probably some lake effect accumulations. There's also another storm behind that and probably an additional one um, as well, further down the road. So the snow will continue to hit the Northeast for the next seven, eight, nine days in waves. All right, let's go West. Um, here is a live look from Vail at the back bowls. I mean, a beautiful morning. And this is one of the earliest openings for the back bowls, apparently, the legendary back bowls. Let me show you what it looks like looking the other direction out towards the Gore Range. A spectacular morning. It is totally clear there in Vail. And uh, like I said, the back bowls are now open. Um, no new snow until potentially late, probably 12.9, uh, late 12.8 into 12.9, maybe trickling into 12.10. That looks pretty light. And then there's an additional storm system down the road um, beyond that for Colorado. So we'll look at all that coming up in the forecast. Here's radar out of the west. It's just high and dry for the lower 48. Some precip being routed up into parts of BC and Canada as expected, but I don't have anything again for the West and until potentially late 12 8 for a lot of locations. So eventually that will send a cold front down, but it's not happening today and it's not happening tomorrow. Let me give you the, lay, the lay of the land here on the water vapor satellite imagery. So again, we're looking down from space here and this is uh, the mid levels of the atmosphere called water vapor and anything in oranges and reds, that's drier air aloft. So still dealing with this ridge of high pressure right here which is why it's been so dry and warm across the West for the last several days. Now that's going to start to change um, as this. Look at this, this moist flow right here. All this moisture is being uh, routed up into Canada and BC. The, the moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues. And you can see it's all part of a larger storm system. There's a low here. There are other areas of low pressure as well. Um, this entire trough, this entire dip in the jet here, will eventually start to break down this high pressure. Uh, and the initial storm will come out around late 12, 8, 12, 9, 12, 10, and race through the Intermountain West with some light snow accumulations. So here's my uh, latest snow timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, Interior, BC, and the Northeast. So for example, in the Wasatch, light snow accumulation on 12, late 12, 8 into 12, 9, into the morning of 12, 9. And, and this is minor. Again, minor, fast moving, moisture starved. Um, then light to moderate accumulations, 12, 12, 13, and 14. Now the Tetons are going to do quite a bit better as it looks. And a lot of my numbers this morning have gone up from what I was talking about yesterday. Moderate snow on 12, 8 light 12.9, and then heavy potential across the Tetons, 12, 12, 13, and 14 with that storm system. Colorado gets a little bit, 12.9, and a little bit into early 12.10, and then moderate accumulations, 12, 14, 15. So we have to look uh, forward to all of that across the West. At least there's something on the board. At least there is a change coming. In the Northeast, you've got several chances of light to moderate accumulation, even a heavy shot potential on 12.11. All right, let me just go back. I want to look at Alta in Little Cottonwood Canyon up there in the Wasatch. This is the forecast mediagram for Alta. So there's our column for today, Friday the 6th, Saturday the 7th, Sunday the 8th, and into the 9th. Now, finally, we have some snowfall showing up, uh, but again, it is not much. It is minor. It is probably an inch or less, and you can see it. I mean, it's under an inch, uh, and that mainly happens late 8 into uh, the morning hours of nine. And then there's another storm down the road, but this one's very light, probably an inch, up to an inch. And you can see the winds start to increase on Sunday, up to 30, 35, 40 mile an hour gusts up there uh, with winds out of the, uh, the west, northwest. Uh, temperatures, high temps today at about 9,000 feet up there at Alta, 36, 36 tomorrow, and then it starts to cool down as that, uh, that front approaches. Okay, let me take you, um, to the time height forecast. Let's make a stop in Colorado. This is Loveland Ski Area up on the Continental Divide. So with this, you're looking at a humidity forecast in the atmosphere, and you're looking at a vertical slice up and down through all the layers. Timelines at the bottom, you read that from right to left. So over the next 72 to 80 hours, it's mostly dry air. That's the yellow and the orange. Now, 
<clears throat> by the time we get into early on the 9th, very late on the 8th, but really it's early on the 9th, there's a little bit of green right there, a tiny little area of green, and it's very shallow. It's mainly at the top of the ridge lines and the top of the high peaks. It doesn't extend much beyond that with dry air at the higher levels or the upper levels of the atmosphere. So it's, it's a, again, it's very small. It's a minor storm, but it is a cold front that will come through with a little bit of accumulation, um, even for Colorado. All right, let me talk about the jet stream forecast. So this is what it looks like by the close of business today. And you can see the arcing to the north of the jet uh, with the high pressure um, just south of that. But watch what happens as we move into Saturday. You can already start to see a little bit of a dip in the jet in the Pacific Northwest in BC. That's the cold front. Look at it roll south through parts of Idaho, Montana, Wyoming. And then it's going to race and brush through the Wasatch and then into Colorado right there. You can see it. Um, the trough digs a little bit deeper. We might have just a tiny bit of spin up in southeast Colorado, but that moves out pretty quick. It's out of there by 12, 10, um, probably by midday it's gone. Then we look to the west and the jet stream actually takes a little more of an optimistic track for the west, a little more of a a stormier track, I should say, and you can see the ripples in the jet. It's a little further to the south. We're not dealing with the ridging, so there's the potential here to bring in additional cold fronts, additional storm systems all the way through 1215 end of day. I'm looking at precipitation and cloud cover. Um, here it is by 530 this afternoon, high and dry, lower 48, lots of sunshine, storms being routed up into uh, BC, Canada, and then eventually down into the uh, the Great Lakes in the Northeast. All right, here's Saturday. Here comes our front. Starts to push some Vanguard snow down into Idaho, Montana, and the Tetons, and then it races right there. I mean, it's it's barely anything, but through the Wasatch down into Colorado with again very light snow accumulations. Here we are in 12 9 end of day, snow moving through southern Colorado, some leftover snow on the north side, um, cruising through parts of the Tetons and Big Sky. Then that moves out, and here comes the that optimistic jet stream pattern. Look, it brings in a storm system right here, 12 12, 12 13, mainly for the northern tier. May brush parts of the Wasatch and central and northern mountains of Colorado, but it's mainly in targeting the Tetons, Idaho, Big Sky. And that then moves through another storm system. So it's like I was saying, with the jet stream pattern, you know, 12, 12 and beyond, it looks to be supporting additional storm systems coming in. It looks pretty optimistic. Okay, my snow forecast. We'll do it in two phases here. So all of today through the night. So this covers our initial storm, our initial cold front coming in from the north. Up to an inch for the Wasatch. One to two, maybe one to three in parts of Colorado. It's moisture starved. It's moving very quickly. More accumulation, moderate to heavy uh, across the Tetons, looking for six to 10 inches up there through Grand Targhee and Jackson Hole and uh, Yellowstone and a lot of uh, big sky. Northwest Montana up to five inches. Um, central to northern Idaho, three to six. And look at uh, BC, looking pretty decent through the interior there, six to eight inches. In fact, you know, I really didn't detail this, but interior BC, your snow timeline, you've got a heavy shot of snow coming in late tonight through tomorrow. So enjoy that powder day tomorrow across interior BC, BC Revelstoke, Powder Highway, uh, Red Mountain, Fernie, Kicking Horse. Enjoy that. And then you've got um, some light snow, 12, 9, 12, 10, and then heavy potential. No, excuse me. That was the Northeast. You've got then moderate accumulations coming in 12, 12. So you, you still got decent snow ahead, and you can see it reflected in these numbers with potentially six, seven, eight inches of snow. Okay, so that's the first time period. Let's go to the second time period. This is 1210 through 1215. So this covers probably two additional storm systems. So the first time period was totally dry for the Sierra. We might be able to pick up one, two, three inches during this time period. Probably four to six across the Wasatch three to eight over Colorado and most of the mountain zones. The biggest snow by far is gonna be over the Tetons with the targeting, with both of those additional storm systems coming right through that area. Um, it could see over a foot of accumulation. Potentially another three to six for Northwest Montana, Idaho looking good four to eight. 
a foot up there in the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, and another few inches, maybe more, up around Revelstoke and Red Mound. So pretty decent time periods. Okay, let's go to the northeast. And again, potentially two, three, four storm systems here, all the way out to 1215, along with a little bit of lake effect. You can see where the big numbers are over parts of New York State, northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, and some of Maine as well. But could see another foot of accumulation up there at Jay Peak, Stowe, Sugarbush, Mad River, Whiteface, and Snow Ridge, uh, and potentially Mount Washington as well. So this looks to be a good stretch with these storm systems coming right out of the Great Lakes and cruising like clippers right through the northeast. All right, guys, that's going to do it. We'll end on the, uh, the western maps. Again, this is 12-6 all up today through the 9th. And then here's the final time period, 12-10 through 12-15. Thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.